you're watching reality check now look at how the cases are surging in india india has hit 50000 plus cases and that's mostly being driven by a handful of states which are driving the cases and just look at the numbers in those states in maharashtra it's crossed 16000 delhi again posting big numbers gujarat again posting big numbers tamil nadu posting big numbers so all these states are adding hundreds of cases every single day as the numbers continue to rise but despite the fact that the numbers are continuing to rise in big ways in a surge the government is refusing to accept the fact that india has entered what is called the community transmission phase the stage 3 of the coronavirus disease this is when there is no clarity on exactly where the infection has come from has the infection come from someone who's traveled abroad has the infection come from someone who's infected somebody because they've traveled abroad stage 3 is when you don't know what the source of the infection is so is the government right in claiming there is no stage 3 the ground evidence seems to suggest otherwise we traveled to the spots of three outbreaks across delhi in the north south and the west and in each of these instances what officials told us that the primary source of the outbreak was one individual a super spreader but in almost every single instance there is no clarity on how that super spreader got infected here's our investigation Tughlaqabad extension in South Delhi, a containment zone, sealed off after the virus erupted here on 15th April. According to local officials, all of it linked to one man. Patient X for Tughlaqabad is a Kirana store owner. When he showed symptoms, he was taken to a number of hospitals, but before that, he was visited by two neighbors, his friends. They in turn mingled with others in the mohalla. By the end of it, 51 infected all in just two gullies but who infected patient x the kirana store owner so far there are no answers as the summary of the official report prepared on him says he stated none of his family members had any history of foreign travel at this stage it would be wrong to suggest the source of the covid infection to the patient here at a primary health clinic ground zero of the outbreak we meet those at the front line of tracing the contact history in these dense, closely packed streets. As this document shows, in the two weeks since the Kirana store owner's results, close to 200 contacts were tracked down and tested. So we are here at Tughlaqabad Extension. This is a Delhi government primary health center. I have with me Savita Saini. She is in charge here. This is a team. Camera can pan. They're all standing around. This is as front line as you can get. He is Sanjay. He, I would say he is the first in our team. First responder. <laughs> first. Uh, line of defense. <laughs> line of defense. And he has done the maximum work of tracing all the contacts. Sure. Without the survey, he, he has uh, traced all the contacts of and uh, those other second two people. He, he has done wonderful work. Ma'am, uh, so you were telling me this is quite a challenging area you're looking after. Uh, the total number of cases of infection has crossed, I think, almost 60. 64. 64. And how difficult or challenging has it been to try and trace the source of it and try and understand where the infection has been coming from? Well, till date, we haven't been able to find the source of infection of our first uh, contact. Right. But uh, my first patient, sorry, yes. and from him, uh, rest of them got infected. Uh, infected, yeah. So you've been trying to get to the source of how he got infected, but that's not not yet clear. Uh, clear. Yes, yes, definitely. Because I think, as people are saying, he's not had any travel history, um, and he he's a shopkeeper. Not, he's a shopkeeper. He's a shopkeeper, and um, yeah, probably he got some from some customer only. Right. And are you finding other examples also of this nature, where the primary source of infection is not clear? Uh, yes, uh, 
there are a couple of uh, such cases, hmm. but mostly uh, were infected from this primary, uh, from the this first primary patient source. of ours. Okay. This and first patient only was the cause of all the um, uh, patients infected in our containment area. Right. Uh, but a uh, couple of sporadic cases are there in our other uh, streets where we are not able to find the primary source. Right. But they are one, two only, not much. The police officials, a key part of the hunt for the source of the disease. Kirana store owner hai. Unko kahan se ho paya? Abhi wo. Ye... अभी वो नहीं पता लगा कि उनको कहाँ से इन्फेक्शन क्लियर नहीं है कि वो कहाँ गए होंगे कहाँ से इन्फेक्शन उनको मिला अभी उसकी जो कि ट्रेसिंग चलती रहती है तो अभी नहीं पता लगता है इतना बट उनकी कोई ट्रैवल हिस्ट्री ऐसा नहीं ट्रैवल हिस्ट्री और ना वो किसी इन्फेक्टेड पर्सन के कांटेक्ट में आए जहाँ तक अभी तक सामने आया अभी तक सामने आई सी और क्या यही वजह थी रान साहब कि ये ना जानने के वजह से फिर और लोगों तक पहुँच गई मतलब जो सोर्स ऑफ इन्फेक्शन है हो सकता है अभी भी कहीं हाँ अगर अनट्रेसेबल हैं तो अनट्रेसेबल हो सकते हैं अब तभी इसको सील भी किया गया तभी लोगों को ये भी कहा जाता है कि आप अपने सेल्फ क्वारंटाइन रहे अगर आप ये लोगों की जिम्मेदारी है कि अगर उनको पता लग गया कि एक्स आदमी को पॉजिटिव आ गया है एंड आई वाज दिस कॉन्टैक्ट तो उसको खुद ही डॉक्टर टी मानी पहले अपना कॉन्टैक्ट कर लेना चाहिए अदरवाइज तो आगे फर्दर इन्फेक्शन से फैल जाए वट्स योर मेन चैलेंज इन इन डीलिंग इन trying to control the infection in this very congested area what what's the main challenge that main facing? challenge is people are not willing to accept that we are uh, dealing with something like corona which is so very dangerous they are they are very naive is it uh, yeah <laughs> even now even not. now they are not willing to um, stay contained they are somehow coming out of the containment area and um, they are uh, they are not willing to understand it I that see. is the main challenge even in the streets they are not bothered to the, to keep the social distancing even in the streets where this all is happening uh, yes yes fueling the spread the delay in results of a group of 93 from tuglakabad extension tested 17 days ago 46 results still pending while they are waiting for their test results to come are they remaining indoors and all of that or are they mingling what, what what they are mingling they are mingling with each other that is the cause of the main spread they have yeah. been mingling in spite of uh, uh, even after testing them uh, we found uh, them uh, mingling with the others their family members their neighbors because in um, one kind of families only this uh, maximum cases are there Right, so they're not able to maintain that discipline, even yes. though they've been tested and they're waiting for the results. Yeah. As we talk to the team of frontline workers, the challenges surface of trying to persuade people to open up. Nursing, is it easy to do the survey? What are the challenges? Not easy. Mushkil to hai because हमारे पास भी families हैं. Even I have a small child, 18 month baby है मेरा. Oh, अच्छा. तो यहाँ भी और मैम की आपने age ही देखी 64. Even she is going with us, or in uh, she have also uh, two year baby na. In ke pas bhi hai. Acha after two years ka bachcha hai. Ah, uh, mera eighteen months ka inka two year ka. Kamal. Very tough. Very. Even aaj to mere arogya setu me bhi moderate risk show kar raha hai. Acha. Arogya setu me dala apne. Ah. Or log apne aap ko thik se. बिल्कुल नहीं वो सिम्टम्स तो सारे छुपाते हैं अच्छा आ, हम जा रहे हैं सर्वे कर रहे हैं इवन मैम गोइंग और पूरा डेटा ले रहे हैं फोन पे डायरेक्ट फीड कर रहे हैं पूछ रहे हैं कि आपको कोई मतलब सिम्टम्स जैसे हम प्यार आस्किंग की फीवर है ये है तो सब मना कर रहे हैं अच्छा और वो सारे कोविड कॉन्टेक्ट है ना मैम दे ऑल आर कॉन्टेक्ट कोविड मतलब ट्वेंटी सिक्स नंबर स्ट्रीट में जो पॉजिटिव था वो उनकी शॉप पर भी गए बट वो कहते हैं हमें कोई सिम्टम ही नहीं है मतलब लोग बिल्कुल कॉपरेट नहीं कर रहे हैं those acute challenges faced by those trying to contain the disease which is perhaps one of the reasons why it appears that the virus may have entered phase 3 our next report moving further north to the sprawling settlement of jahangir puri and again the story is similar here we'll put those details up on the screen for you of what is unfolding in jahangir puri now here 
More than 120 people have been infected. Again, officials say mostly through one source, and how she got infected is unclear. This is patient X, is a 55-year-old woman, became breathless, was admitted to a number of hospitals, and then she dies on the 5th of April. Her test results showing her positive only comes out on the 9th. By then, many have attended her funeral, and at least 31 have been infected. Again, when the question came up how she was infected, no travel history, no contact with a sick person, local officials admitting as much. First instance, it was because of a lady exactly. who, who came from RML. And came from uh, RML hospital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She died. She died and was tested COVID positive later on. Right. And, uh, most of her family members were, who had gone to the funeral, yeah. because uh, they were unaware about her status, yeah. they uh, contacted that uh, virus and that was the primary source here. Did she have any travel history? Uh, no, she didn't have any travel history per se. So no travel history again in the case of Jahangir Puri. From Jahangir Puri, we travel further west to the edge of Delhi's border with Haryana. Sukirti Duvedi reports on yet another outbreak where the source and how the person who infected everybody else remains unclear. In just this one building in Kapas Heda in Delhi, 58 people found infected. Patient X officials suspect may have been a pregnant woman who lives in the building who was asymptomatic, but the hospital that admitted her ended up testing her. April 19th, her test results came positive. She had no travel history and how she was infected is not clear as yet. While officials refused to comment on the source of infection for the woman, government sources said that it was unknown. But the woman was a surrogate mother and used to visit several hospitals and fertility clinics. She could have possibly caught the infection there. Test ke samples humne NIV Noida mein bheja the aur Delhi aur Noida ke beech ka rasta band ho gaya tha. Wahan pe blockade kar diya gaya tha aur uske alawa Noida ke jo facility hai usme kafi sara backlog bhi ikhatta ho gaya tha. Aur wahan par jitne bhi log jo is bimari se abhi sankramit hain, wo us building ke andar hi simit hain. So, उस बिल्डिंग के बाहर कोई भी आदमी तब से 19 तारीख से बाहर नहीं निकला है और वो एरिया पूरी तरह से कंटेन्ड है लगातार वहां पे मेडिकल चेकअप हो रहा है उन लोगों का और हमारी टीम दिन और रात वहां पे मौजूद है ये इंश्योर करने के लिए कि उनमें से कोई भी आदमी बाहर ना जाए द अथॉरिटी सील्ड द बिल्डिंग एंड दिस होल स्ट्रीट ऑन 19th अप्रैल इटसेल्फ बिकॉज़ इट इज इन अ कंजेस्टेड एरिया द बिल्डिंग इज होम टू 175 माइग्रेंट लेबरर्स हु लिव इन 60 क्रैम्प्ड रूम्स they were tested on 20th and 21st April, but their test reports came over 10 days later on 2nd and 3rd May, and 57 more people tested positive, all of them asymptomatic. But the danger is not limited to the building alone. Four positive cases in the district magistrate's office just across the road. A total of 11 staff members, including the DM, are under home quarantine now as a precautionary measure, though they have tested negative in the first round. The source of infection is unknown in this case too. All right, so the mystery over the outbreak raising questions about the exact stage we are in of the disease. I've got a great panel with me. I've got uh, Dr. Rajesh Malhotra. He's the, the chief of the COVID center at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences here in Delhi. We have Dr. Sudarshan Balal, who's chairman of internal medicine at Manipal Hospitals. And uh, Dr. Heman P. Tucker, he's a consulting physician and an associate, someone who's been associated with uh, all the big hospitals in Bombay, just look, Breach Candy, and so on. Let me just start by asking each of you very quickly to just weigh in on a very basic question when we'll come to a wider discussion on that later. But uh, just on whether or not we have now entered stage three community transmission not just based on our ground report but also based on what all of you are seeing and hearing and let me just start uh, with that question to you uh, dr malhotra so uh, it is uh, now becoming quite evident that the contact tracing is becoming more and more difficult and uh, that is compounded by two facts one is the large number of asymptomatic carriers uh, or asymptomatic persons who have not got the disease and uh, that transmission as we have seen is uh, uh, getting more and more uh, important uh, so okay. in view of that i think uh, the 
the spread which is occurring because of people who are apparently all right is the big uh, key question here whatever you want to label it oh i see uh, dr balal have we entered community spread uh, good evening to you and all the panelists what we have seen uh, that has happened in our country is we started off uh, with the disease being widespread across the country now what we okay. see is it's sort of more in uh, four states rather than the rest of the country and some of the states especially kerala and to some extent our state of karnataka we hardly see any cases and certainly no fatalities yeah. i think i would leave it to the epidemiologist to say whether it's entered stage 3 or not but it certainly appears that contact tracing is becoming difficult and one or two individuals seem to be spreading to a large number of people but since okay. it's confined very few states hopefully they'll be take measures to contain this disease further right uh, dr thakkar let me just take that question quickly to you before we we widen the scope uh, same question are we now in stage 3 i am a clinician and not an active epidemiologist but the fact sure. remains that my numbers are going up i am hands on seeing patients i am not worried about which phase or which stage we are in but i know okay. for a fact that we are getting patients by the hordes i am in maharashtra and in mumbai which is the epicenter absolutely what we are finding ourselves in the predicament today is a result of what we behaved yesterday and what we do today will tell us what we will manifest tomorrow right I don't the asymptomatic problem is going to settle down it's going to get worse my panelist is absolutely right so we have to come to grips with it and move on ahead rather than looking back at which phase we are in okay okay then let's let's now come down to brass tacks uh, dr malotra all of you are saying labels don't matter it doesn't matter now which phase we are in it's really how we tackle it but each phase i suppose demands a different response so suppose we're in this phase where as you said there are people who are asymptomatic uh, it's becoming harder for authorities to trace who infected in a sense the patient x what do you do then what strategy if at all should we be changing to how to to fight so, this disease so i think before i answer that i'll just make a quick comment i i think we all keep on talking about travel history i think it has become absolutely irrelevant now since that we haven't had a uh, traveler from overseas for a time much longer than what it takes for oh. the person to actually get recovered so i don't think the travel history is going to yield anything at this point of time i think to some extent we'll have to start thinking that a person coming from a very high concentration of cases is possibly going to behave much the same way and should be held as a suspect as it was okay. when somebody who came to uh, came back with a travel history whether or not he had a disease now i think sure. the the profiling the district profiling or the state profiling as per see mm. we are a huge country and every state yes. like it was said by my panelist that has different numbers and some of the states are better equipped to deal with it like states like kerala which have dealt with nipa or states like uh, odisha which are so yes. adept at handling the Uh, the uh, natural calamities so we have different things so we have to have a strategy which is uh, applicable all across and for that i think we have to concentrate on the numbers so wherever there are large uh, numbers we have to just contain okay. them quarantine them test them do contact tracing within them and keep a watch isolate them better keep a watch on those who are worse and those area okay. which are relatively preserved can be kept pristine as far as possible sure that's fair enough um but this is a big challenge dr bala because people are now uh, you know locked down for over 40 days the numbers still seem to be going up and you have yep. situations now as we just reported from delhi three different clusters where we don't know who is the person i mean the person who actually infected these clusters we don't know where that person got the infection from so whoever was that initial source could still be uh you know at large but to to try to now contain people to try to get them to subject themselves to contact tracing to accept the fact that you know they may have to now perhaps go into a phase of quarantine is turning out to be difficult i mean this is a this is a challenge i uh, i do agree that the numbers are going up uh, but we have been extremely extremely fortunate that uh, our numbers in spite of the increase in a few states is nowhere close to the rest of the world especially uh, countries like the US Spain Italy UK yeah. so we are
Well, so far less. Unfortunately for us, uh, the reported deaths so far are less than 2,000, which uh, in a country where about 10 million people die every year is mm. a number that uh, should not worry us. Any single death is something that we are very concerned about. But the number sure. of less than 2,000 is somewhat uh, comforting that we have not reached the death rates of the rest of the world. So we really need to concentrate on the areas which are now the epicenters of COVID. And containment yeah. is what we should look at. I think treat them, treating them in the ICU is something that we should try to avoid. And fortunately for us, we haven't had too many people getting into the ICUs, at least in most of the country. So, and we have to start living with corona and not live in the fear of corona because corona will be with us for some time and hopefully the peak will come down in another four to eight weeks. But we'll still okay. have uh, episodes of corona here and there. So we have to sure. learn to live with corona with the necessary precautions. Okay. Dr. Thakkar, now so we have to, from your we understanding, have, again, we have not to get categorize to... our people. I would categorize the young and the likely to be asymptomatic and categorize okay. the elderly and the likely to get symptomatic if they get infected, and especially okay, in me, the containment zones. Okay, if I let, me, let me ask you this though, Dr. Thakkar. My, the question yes. I was really asking you is that without again getting into labels, whether we're in phase A or B or C, what do you see really unfolding in Bombay? Because as you said, you're in the heart of it. What is leading to this constant surge? I've had two patients admitted today, an elderly lady who is 76, who has arthritis, who hasn't mm -hmm. left her home for the last six to eight months. And she came, she turned out to be COVID positive. As it turns out, the maidservant looking after her goes once a month to her house to give the salary that she earns. And she then tested positive and she gave it to the old lady. So I would categorize the susceptible people, the elderly people into one category, and the mm. asymptomatic young people who could be the spreaders, who will be the spreaders, and contain them right. I think we haven't really learned our lessons of social distancing. We saw it mm. in Bombay for two days when the liquor shops opened, when the migrant mm. trains ran, and people really think this is a joke. They think they have to hide from an unseen, unheard, unfelt enemy, and it'll go away like Cinderella, whose dress will change at midnight. In yes. fact, when we unlock, we're going to get worse because people will think now the trial by fire is over. Right. That's when the trial by fire will start. You'll have to have proper distancing unless you crack the whip, unless you inject panic and fear mm and not apprehension as people have now. It's going to be difficult because we are a 1.2 billion population. Not everybody knows the impact. As my yeah. partner and colleague correctly said, we are not having a high mortality. We are lucky. We have a lighter yeah. strain, a lesser virulent strain, but we'll have yeah. numbers. So that's important. No, no, it is. Uh, Dr. Malhotra, if I have the time, uh, just uh, give us a sense, as we just heard from Dr. Tucker, of the kind of examples of patients, cases he's dealing with, of the kind of patients you're seeing, and what, what that is telling you about how the disease is spreading. Dr. Malhotra? Dr. Rajesh Malhotra, can you hear me? Dr. Malhotra? All right, Dr. Malhotra, we seem to have lost you, but uh, I'll just quickly put that to you, Dr. Balal, that uh, based on your experience, again, talking to people in your different hospitals, are these the kind of instances that you're also coming across? People no. being admitted, no travel history, no, pre no prior contact history, and no, making that, that making it all the more challenging? Fortunately, the numbers are very, very low in Karnataka. And the government yes. has been very proactive. In fact, we have a COVID hospital, dedicated COVID hospital with 150 beds. And believe right. it or not, we don't have a single patient with COVID in that hospital. And it's open to the private public sector and everyone. So the numbers are few, but we also run what's called as EICU and teleconsults for many okay. of the district hospitals. And the numbers, again, are small. And not okay. too many people are very sick. And the sick are usually okay. the elderly with comorbidities. Right. Okay, 
Well, let's hope it stays that way, at least for Karnataka, and then hopefully that gets replicated across the country. But uh, thank you all so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us. It's been fascinating. That's all the time we have in Reality Check. Thanks for watching. Good night.